All right, everybody, we're back again for another install here on the good old FK8. This time our boys over at PRL sent us our early Valentine's gift, a brand new titanium inlet pipe. This thing wasn't supposed to get here till the end of February. Seems like we've been blessed yet again with an early delivery. We're gonna get this bad boy installed tonight. Shouldn't take too long. From what I've heard is the install process takes maybe about a good hour or so. We got the trusty free labor assistant already working on getting the parts taken off the car. Now what you're gonna need is this guy right here. And if you can't see it that well, this is a 12 millimeter flex socket. And you see this deal here? This is so you can get into those hard to reach places and torque this sucker out, which we'll need for when we get to that part of the removal of the inlet pipe. Now, we're still debating if we're gonna loosen up these two screws and the one in the back to make sure that the intake box is a little loose so we can get this sucker out. But we're gonna pull this out, we're gonna pull this out, we're gonna get rid of this guy because the PRL kit supplies you with the new one since the inlet pipe's a lot bigger. Once we remove that, you gotta remove the two screws that go here. These are 10 millimeters, these two here, and there's one right back here. Let's see if I can show it to you. Right there, if you can see it. That's where it goes. And then there's another two on this side, which I'll zoom in in a second. And then there's two more that actually hold the actual inlet pipe. And those are the 12 millimeters. So here we go. We're gonna see how well or how fast we can get this sucker installed. A little up close view. You remove these four that hold these uh, coolant lines. Then we're gonna also remove this guy, which we already took care of right there. Remember this little rubber piece goes off of the inlet pipe, the stock one, and goes onto the new one. And now in here is where it gets a little dicey for you guys. You first have to figure out a way to disconnect this little harness here. And be very careful. I've seen a lot of videos where people end up poking or what's it called, pinching this vacuum line and you're gonna get boost leaks and boost issues with it because if you notice this bad boy creeps underneath down into there it goes attached to god knows where to be honest with you but that's where you got to be very careful not to mention i think you can kind of see it Let's see if i can squeeze this guy in here that right there is where one of the 12 millimeter bolts to the inlet pipe goes now, to give you an idea of where the second one is, it's gonna be underneath here, like you see these green and yellow wires. It's gonna make its way down into here. We're gonna try and get you a better look, but it's way in there. And getting it out is where you need to be very smart because getting it out is easy. It's like right. It's just putting it in that's gonna be a challenge. You what I mean by that is lo losing the actual bolt while you're trying to put it in there. So it's right, right here, right where the end of the socket is, right here. I don't know if y'all can see that. So right, move it back and forth. So right there is where that 12 millimeter goes. As you can tell right here in front of this hose, right there is where the 10 mil goes to hold this bracket and then there's another 10 mil that goes right there, as you can see. Again, we're gonna map this out a little better, see if I can give you guys a, a tip on what makes it easier to get this screw out. All right, you guys can see right all the way over there is that other 12 that we were talking about. Now the best and cleanest way that we are trying to get this is by we unclipped this clip here that goes to this, uh, what, blow off valve, I'm assuming. We took this off to give us room. You can see this little hose. When you're trying to use your tool to screw in there, what ends up happening is this gets in the way and your chances of pinching this are gonna be pretty high and the last thing you need to do is pinch this because this sucker goes attached all the way down into there as you can see and it comes all the way up and it goes attached to here and again from what I've seen a bunch of dudes they all have boost leaks is because of this piece getting frayed during the installation process 
So again, we're just taking that extra time to figure this out and hopefully we don't damage anything. But yeah, we're gonna give it a shot now. As you can tell right there is that pesky 12 millimeter bolt that we're gonna have to get out moving forward. There you go, boys. Okay, so just to recap what we had to do here is we disconnected the plug, right, from this guy here. We also made sure that we disconnected, that we pulled off of the bracket the hose that goes here and that wraps around like so. And the easiest way to do this one so you don't hurt it is I pinched it, pushed down, and I pulled out. Because it is a hose. You don't want to pull it because it's a nice snug fit. Be careful. Also, the way we were able to get this sucker in, I'm not going to lie, it is a pain in the ass to be 100 with you. We inserted a socket, like so, with this extension. We put it in here first, okay? So made sure it was on the bolt. And then with my set of hands, I made sure that I held it in place and I moved the vacuum hose away from the socket. So while it's turning, the hose is not getting pinched or snagged. Also, you need to be 100% sure and close that whatever you're using does not hit this because this is the AC line. I gotta kind of push it back a little bit because it goes right there. We did move it a tad bit to try and give us some more space. But yeah, it is a tight fit. It is really, really tight. Okay, we are gonna also loosen up these two. Uh, the minor Allen wrench, but you would have probably, I think, a 10 mil there. And the 10 mil that goes in the back. So that way it gives us some more play. So we could take this sucker out and we'll remove the old inlet. Remember, there is a gasket that goes on this inlet and I'll show you a trick once you pull it out. So that way it makes a nice tight fit. Okay. Super careful, take your time when you're doing this. Wait, it's gotta clear this. Make sure this piece clears. Okay, inlet's out. Took a little wiggling out, as you saw. So just make sure you keep wiggling back and out, right? Mm -hmm. So you're kind of gonna take it when it's I got, oh, when it's in. You're gonna take it out. You almost want to lean it forward on this side and just start kind of bringing it out. It's 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 a little rough because of this area right here, but you just want to you know you see a little couple little little battle scars right there when we're pulling it out. Uh, it's the easiest, best way. Just make sure that again, those vacuum hoses are cleared out. Make sure that all this harness area is out of your way. If you got a, another hand like I do, it's a little bit easier. Now, little trick when it comes to this guy here, you're gonna wanna pinch the edges on both sides and that way it makes a nice tight fit. So when you're putting it back in, it stays on it and you don't have to worry about the, the gasket on its way in. That way it won't come loose or it won't pop out on you. Mine seems to be, be a little loose. We're gonna pinch those edges just to make sure it, it makes a nice little tight fit. And again, you don't gotta go too crazy. You don't gotta, you gotta bend it. Just, you know, like a paper clip. Just bend it a little bit. So it makes a nice little tight. Okay. All right, boys, another little tip for when putting in that bad boy in is get yourself a nice, strong magnet. Uh, just like that. That's how we put it in to that area. We, we slid it in, made sure it went in. We're gonna do it right now. Hopefully we don't lose it in real time. Let me get around. Just like that, you see? Magnet's strong enough to at least help us thread it once or twice. And once we get that sucker in just like that, then we're gonna put in our trusty little 12 millimeter swivel with it, with our extension. Ooh. Ooh, just a little. And see? All right. 
just like that. Makes it your life a hell of a lot easier. That way you don't lose anything in the process. Because if you do lose it in this abyss, you're gonna have to jack your car up. If you already have it on the lift, then you're that much lucky. Er, but if you don't, then you're gonna have to take the pan out and start searching. And again, if you don't have a magnet, good luck. If it gets stuck somewhere in those hard to reach spots, like there and there and there and there and there. So far, this install has been taking us what? 15 minutes, 20 minutes so far, give or take. Here's a nice little comparison. See the diameter, how big it is compared to the stock one. Look at that little baby opening compared to this guy. I'm trying to match it up so you can see it better. Yeah, massive. In and out compared to the stock one. Look at that. Compared to the stock one. Give me some more air, please. A few moments later. Spot check time. I'm going ahead and tightened up the two 12 millimeters that hold the actual uh, aluminum there, the cast aluminum part of the inlet pipe. We went ahead and put this rubber cup on. Remember, there's a line right here that you want to make sure it lines up to. Once we tighten it, it's going to make a good little seal here. Now the additional two 10 mils that hold the uh, harness in place. Now remember to put in all these hoses back into place and snap everything back so that you get no loose or pinched uh, hoses or wires. And you want to make sure that that's clipped back into place. And make sure you clip it well. If not, you're going to get a Christmas tree of lights firing off. Okay, like I was just telling you guys, there's one. The other one's down there, as you can see it. If you follow that metal air conditioning line, you'll see it right above it. Just don't have a free hand to show you exactly where it's at. But there it is right there. You see it and those two hold this harness in place. And again, these are plastic pieces. You don't need to over, over tighten it. Just wanna make sure it's just snug. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the inlet pipe. Remember to clean it before you put it on, we're gonna clean it with some ammonia-free cleaner real quick, just to make sure we get off any of the fingerprints or oils that we had on it. All right, boys, little tip here. Use, uh, if you have Meguiar's waterless wash and wax, go ahead and spray a little bit on this. That way you go ahead and remove any of the fingerprints and grime that's left before you install it on your car. And then once you have it installed, before you fire it up, give it a final wipe down. And that's just so you can go ahead and avoid leaving fingerprints on it. Now, I know some of you guys are going to get fancy with it and try and put some ceramic coating and whatnot. That is out of my league. I don't know what to do with ceramic coating. But if you're just going to let it roll naked like we are, go ahead and spray her with some of this. Should be good to go. By the way, this uh, waterless wash and wax Every time I give the car a good old polish with it, it smells so good after. Pick yourself up some, it's not that expensive on Amazon. I think it's like eight bucks for a bottle. It does wonders too, it makes your car look nice and shiny. Anywho, use a nice clean microfiber towel. Voila, no more fingerprints. Trusty Free Labor Assistant's gonna go ahead and install this in here. trouble sliding it in use a little lube like I said a little spit goes a long way a little water all that always usually works I was worried about the heat shield cover having to be removed because this boy is a lot bigger as you can tell fits like a glove no issues okay boys a little tip as well usually when you're installing the PRL intake doesn't only have to be for the inlet pipe you get this little issue here where this piece actually sits north and south what you start getting is you get rubbage and depending on how you place it you could either get the like I did you get a little bit of the 
uh, clip, this guy here, like this, that actually rubs into the metal of the car or leaves these lines here. And eventually you get to a point where you may actually have to replace this line because it gets so marred up, it might rip on you on track or just through daily driving. We went ahead and turned this a full 90 degrees. So now it's horizontally, as you can tell. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the hose and try and turn this a little bit. So that way we get this little kink out of the way. But that should help avoid this, as you can tell. That was what I'm talking about here on your hook. Just an FYI. We're gonna give it a try, except we're gonna twist this hose a little bit, see if we can take this nasty kink out, as you can see it. I'm gonna try and take that kink out of the way. Oh yeah. See that bolt back there? Make sure you put that one on before you put the actual sleeve on. We made the mistake of, well actually let me run this back. You need to make sure that you don't have any of these four on the actual inlet. Cause you wanna give that play so you could move this. You know, we kind of popped it out a little bit so you could move it and kind of position the, the sleeve in. Now, if you get the sleeve in before you put these two bad boys in make sure you you secure it if not it is going to be a pain in the ass we were pushing this as hard as we could to get it in there we finally got it in without bending or really causing any type of issues and we're about 99 percent done here I'm just going to double check all our work make sure everything's tightened up make sure everything is clamped that way we don't have any type of issues and I believe we're gonna reflash the car so that way the Honda knows that I have an inlet pipe now and we're gonna go out for a test drive and hopefully this thing spools better, sounds better and feels better. Also, what it's gonna do is hopefully lower our air temperatures while on track and with everyday driving. Okay, we're all about done. I gave it a nice little spray of that Meguiar's detailer. Once again, just to give it that nice little shine, take away any fingerprints. Because remember, once you fire this bad boy up, those fingerprints or oil marks, whatever you want to call it, will be there. All right, we are done here. Look at this bad boy. It looks amazing in the car. PRL makes a hell of a product. I mean, tolerances were spot on, everything bolted matched up no issues looking good looking good we're about to fire this up we're actually doing a quick reflash to the car make sure we got the right tune for it now all of you guys that want to do your own private tunes you're more than welcome we're just going to do the full bolt-on one and leave it like that i haven't gotten a tune for it i'm not sure if i want to do that just yet like i said i'm still debating about doing flex fuel not sure we'll find out if we really need to go that route Right now, we are completely bolt-on. Everything is PRL. Intercooler, charge pipes, down pipe, front pipe, and now the inlet pipe and intake. Everything is all PRL. The system should work tip-top since it all marries one another. Super stoked right now. Can't wait for this thing to flash and we're gonna take it out for a cruise around the block. All right, boys, first startup after the flash. Deeper sounds of her. So deeper sound. Let's see, we're gonna give it a good little rev. See what happens here. sounds okay all right everybody we just got back from a drive everything went great so far so good no lights no warnings i must say that the acceleration on the car feels a hell of a lot better and truth be told if you're really expecting to feel you know 
blistering power out of this inlet pipe I don't think that's what you're gonna get out of it I you know to be honest with you what I do feel is way quicker response when it comes to acceleration I do feel as if the car opens up a lot better boost definitely gets up this car gets up to about 22 to 23 pounds at any given point and I mean, I can say it gets up to boost pretty quick. Even when you're in the lower RPM bands and you go ahead and you floor it, it seems to want to open up a hell of a lot quicker. That I will say yes. And again, I mean, we're still new to the, you know, offerings of what this thing will do for us. Just put it in tonight. Like I said, I'm gonna drive it around a few more days, see how it feels. And then we're gonna put it to the test when we go to Streets of Willow and then ultimately Chuck Walla and see how the ambient air temps work out. Again, supposed to drop air temperature, you know, significantly. And with all the cooling mods we've done recently, as you guys have seen, you know, oil cooler, better radiator, better grill, you know. I know the intercooler doesn't necessarily give you better air temperatures but we've done everything so far that i can do myself to this car to get it to perform well on the track and i hope that it all pays off now that i'm gonna try and go a little bit more spirited out on the track run more laps maybe be a little bit more aggressive next thing for this car and hopefully i can get this done is to invest in a better set of tires and wheels now we do run Advan RZ2s on this bad boy with Michelin PS4s. The only downside is that these guys are 19s and not 18s. Now if any of you guys are selling a cheap pair of 18s, hit up your boy, let me know. I am in the market for some Titan 7s. Again, I really like the look that we have for the car, but when we are gonna go on track, we are gonna need a dedicated set of track tires. And I do believe that my best bang for my buck is gonna be the Titan 7 wheels. I mean, these things are battle tested. These things take a beating and keep on spinning. So therefore, we're gonna go ahead and go with that. Now again, everyone, I wanna thank everybody for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I did my best to record, you know, everything when it came to installing this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Thanks, Connor. Appreciate your professionalism. Your titanium inlet pipe went to a good home. I promise you we'll put her to good use. Thanks again, Connor. Appreciate all the people over at PRL Motorsports for their awesome commitment to customer service, packaging, and super, super great parts.